What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Alien issue number 4. And man, issue number 4 is turning it up. I didn't expect the direction that this is headed, but holy crap, this actually made this comic so much better. Now this story has focused on LV-695, the year 2195. We have been following the scientist known as Batya Zan, her partner Dayton, and her daughter Zasha. They have been researching the water resources on this frozen moon, but when they discovered a face hugger in the ice, Weyland Yutani had bought out the whole company, and now they have come to this moon so that they can collect. But when things go sideways, when the ice starts to thaw out, the xenomorphs begin to attack. And now, with all hell breaking loose, it is all a matter of survival. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up 300 feet beneath the icy surface. The Weyland yutani ship had sunk underneath, and the only person on board is Dayton. One arm unable to get out of here, and he watches as all of the xenomorphs, they begin to rise up. As we pick up with Batya and Zasha, right now Batya crying her eyes out, because they believe that Dayton is dead. With Batya telling her daughter that he may not have been your father, but he was a good man. As they come to terms with his loss, Zasha begins to investigate, and she believes that she found a way for them to get out of here. As we pick up with the soldiers Harrison and the others, they have come down to investigate, and they see this very pale-colored face hugger. Not really understanding what the heck is going on, not understanding what is happening or what this actual thing is. This situation definitely looks dicey, but thinking, how can it get any worse? What they are unaware of is on the outside. There is an entire garrison of freaking xenomorphs that are headed directly for them. As they climb their way up the icy tundra, we pick back up with Batya and Zasha. With Batya being pregnant, she's not able to move very quickly. Right now, they are headed for the escape ship. With everything going on, the escape ship has become operational. But as they make their way through the hallways, a man looking as if something had burst out of his chest. Zasha curious on how this happened. This is when her mother finally comes clean, saying that their job here wasn't just to test the water source. She was working on covert stuff on the side. She had began examining the extraterrestrial samples that they found last year. Her father had found the first one that was prior to his accident, telling her that the things she found in the ice was a new sample from a new organism, one that Weyland yutani wants. Potentially, it could have been worth a fortune, believing that this was their ticket off of this rock, a ticket that they can't cash in now. But they do have all of her research, and they do have a bio sample, and she is carrying it in her womb telling her daughter that they need to get off planet. But as they walk down the corridors, this is where she has an immense amount of pain from her stomach. Her water breaking. She had tested so many samples and everything looked fine. That she learned so much. This sample, it is supposed to make her brother a hybrid. Something new and amazing. Human mixed with xenomorph. She hadn't wanted to start this process yet, but her hand had been forced. But now she is recognizing that something is wrong, telling her daughter that she needs to induce this baby before it is too late. That even if they could make it to the escape pod, she believes that this pregnancy is far too delicate to survive a trip to orbit. That this is the only chance her or the brother have to survive. And this is where we see that pale face hugger, now gone into its second stage. It burst out of the chest of the man that it had grabbed hold of, as it begins its evolution. At the same time, we have Zasha, who is currently delivering this baby. This hybrid child of xenomorph and human. Being able to deliver the baby successfully, Batya died during childbirth. 
with Zasha having tears pouring down her eyes, asking her mother why she did this, why she would leave her here all alone. The hybrid child, it did not survive, and so Zasha has lost her hybrid brother and her mother. At this point, the Xenomorphs are closing in, putting the dead fetus into a jar. She may not have been able to save the hybrid's life, but she plans to bury it somewhere out there, somewhere on a new world. As she walks down the hallways, this is where she sees that white Xenomorph. With it cutting her off, it gets ready to go in for the kill, but that's when it gets hit with a wrench. Time and time again, the person telling Zasha to get back, to stay safe, and this person, this is Dayton, telling her that these things are really hard to kill, checking in on her, seeing if she is okay. But while he does so, the Xenomorph comes back in. As he smashes this thing's skull in, we see the heavy damage that he took. But after the battle, we see what is left over of Dayton. He is no human. He is a synthetic. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Definitely not the direction that I thought this comic was going. This whole time, Batya has been carrying a hybrid xenomorph human child, hoping that Weyland Yutani would pay her all kinds of money for this thing. Obviously, that didn't pan out. The baby came out dead and it killed her during childbirth. But that doesn't mean that the sample might not be viable at, le at the very least for experimentation. And so while it didn't live, it could still very well be their ticket to fortune. Because no matter what, Weyland Utani is going to want that sample. But I do think that Dayton being a synthetic, it didn't blatantly come out and say so, but I think it was kind of implied throughout this. It makes sense, it's the only viable way for him to actually be able to survive this long, especially with one arm. But it also looks like we're seeing another subspecies of the Xenomorphs, a white pale Xenomorph. The head shape a little bit different, the tail looking a little bit more furry than it would be scaly or sleek. But yeah, definitely not a bad issue, definitely took some turns that I just simply was not expecting. Very excited for the last issue, very excited to see how this is going to end and what will be coming next. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this alien story, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this story. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.